What's up, y'all? What's going on now? Oh, yeah, it's Corner Sports Net. Do not forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Now, Cormani McLean, he left Colorado 10 days ago, entered his name in the portal. So he don't want to play football for clicks, shares, likes, and comments. He just signed to an agency that handles NIL. But he's 10 days in, and he hasn't found a school yet. A couple schools not messing with him. One college said uh, he's kind of hard to find. Like, we can't get in touch with him. Another school said that he left Dion. So we don't really need to mess with him. Another program said we found out there's too many red flags. So we're not going to recruit him. Now, he's too talented not to get recruited. He'll end up somewhere and it'll be a power five school. But he anticipated a bigger buzz than he's getting right now. And it's not materializing. Now I'm sure he's getting those schools that he has no interest in. Some of them smaller power fives, some FCS schools, but he don't have no interest in those. Now he'll end up in a big school. Now you have some people in Colorado, they getting on Kamani McLean. Talk about he's bigger than the program, but that's not the case. He just don't want to play for Deion Sanders. Everybody can't be coached up like this is the 1980s, 1990s. He's probably one of them people. So he gave a commitment to Miami. Ron flipped him in the of Colorado. Now he's on the move. I'm sure we'll hear something shortly uh, where he'll end up at or who he's signing with. Now, Arizona State quarterback, Jaden Rashada, he's the quarterback coming out of high school who thought he was going to get $13 million from Florida's NIL collectives. Gave them a verbal. Never attended. Decommitted. Then he was scrambling to find a school because it was getting late in the game. So he went to Arizona State. Didn't do much there. Into the transfer portal. Now he signed with Georgia. Now he got four years of eligibility left. They ain't gonna play at Georgia either. Carson Beck is coming back. He ain't starting over him. I thought the idea of transfer was for NIL money and a better opportunity to play on Saturdays. Why would he even pick Georgia? Like, what is he thinking about? And they still got Gunnar Stockton there. He was highly recruited. He was like a sophomore. So it's not going to be easy for Jaden Rashada to play at Georgia. Like, of all schools, why would you pick Georgia? But at the end of the day, I guess he felt that was the best fit for him. I wish him nothing but success at Georgia. But he climbing a mountain at Georgia. Now, former Colorado running back, Dylan Edwards, he went back home. He transferred to Kansas State. Now, he's going to be a backup running back there, too. But his family can go to all his games, so that's a good look. And he's comfortable in the state of Kansas. I oh, wish him not but success. Going on this corner sports net. Now, it was two outstanding basketball games on the day. Shout out to Kyrie Irving. You know, he's from New Jersey. Shout out to Jalen Brunson. He's from New Jersey. They both had great games. Now, I'm a Sixer fan, but I'm going to give credit where credit to do. Jalen Brunson just destroyed the Sixers. Now, they have 3-1. They probably is going to win the series in five. And the Clippers, they tied the series up. They was down 2-1. They had a 31-point lead. And the Mavericks actually tied it up. No, the Mavericks actually took the lead. And Kyrie Irving was outstanding. Outstanding. He finished with 40 points. I uh, got that gray coming in there looking like a booger. His wife, he said, I might want to, I might want to cut that. Anyway, if you've been following my, um channel over the years 
I've always said that NFL scouts do not care or respect HBCU athletes and the competition and the coaches. So I'm not gonna hold y'all and I'm not gonna talk about that too much. I did this video in 2021 and I was talking about how HBCU players didn't draft it, but I was making excuses. I said, well, maybe COVID played a part and guys not getting drafted. So here we are in 2024. And once again, guys, HBCU football players, uh, they went undrafted. So, so I'm all a lot of excuses and it's the same thing every year. HBCU athletes, for the most part, don't get drafted. Then a slew of guys get signed as undrafted rookie free agents. And then a couple of guys make rosters every year. But then you turn around and you got Division II guys getting drafted. And you're like, wait a minute. That goes to show you, I'm going to remind y'all again, NFL scouts do not respect the talent at HBCUs. They don't. What's good, y'all? What's going on now? Colorado for the third year in a row, they didn't have no players drafted. And it kind of makes sense. They haven't been good in years. They haven't been good in years. So I'm not shocked that they didn't have anybody drafted. Now in 2025, they're going to have at least two players drafted. Shadour Sanders and Travis Hunter. And probably Shiloh Sanders. Probably be a late round pick. So... They won't have to worry about this in 2025. Now, I'm looking on the internet. I'm reading different things. And they got in bold print, Colorado, for the third straight year. Had nobody drafted. So I said, let me dig deeper and see what schools didn't produce a draft pick. Arizona State. They didn't have anybody drafted. But I don't see them in big print on the internet. Nebraska. They didn't have anybody drafted. Baylor didn't have nobody drafted either. Syracuse didn't have nobody drafted. Northwestern didn't have anybody drafted. So once again, they're going to put Deion Sanders' face on something for them click, shares, and like. 